Theodosius Grigorovic Dobbs Hansky was a prominent American geneticist and evolutionary biologist, and a central figure in the field of evolutionary biology for his work in shaping the unifying modern evolutionary synthesis. Dobbs Hansky was born in Ukraine, then part of the Russian Empire, and became an immigrant to the United States in 1927, aged 27 years old. His 1937 work Genetics and the Origin of Species became a major influence on the synthesis and was awarded the U.S. National Medal of Science in 1964, and the Franklin Medal in 1973. Biography Early Life Dobbs Hansky was born on January 25, 1900 in Nemerev, Russian Empire, currently Ukraine, an only child. His father, Grigory Dobbs Hansky, was a mathematics teacher, and his mother was Sofia Voynarsky. In 1910 the family moved to Kiev, Russian Empire. At high school, Dobbs Hansky collected butterflies and decided to become a biologist. In 1915, he met Viktor Luknik who convinced him to specialize in beetles instead. Dobbs Hansky attended the Kiev State University between 1917 and 1921, where he then studied until 1924. He then moved to St. Petersburg, Russia, to study under Yuri Filipchenko, where a Drosophila melanogaster lab had been established. On August 8, 1924, Dobbs Hansky married geneticist Natalia Natasha Sivertseva who was working with I.I. Schmalhausen in Kiev, Ukraine. The Dobbs Hanskys had one daughter, Sophie, who later married the American archaeologist and anthropologist Michael D. Coe. Before moving to the USA, Dobbs Hansky published 35 scientific works on entomology, genetics, and zootechnique. America Dobbs Hansky immigrated to the United States in 1927 on a scholarship from the International Education Board of the Rockefeller Foundation to work and study in the United States. Arriving in New York City on December 27, he worked with Thomas Hunt Morgan at Columbia University, who had pioneered the use of fruit flies, Drosophila melanogaster, in genetics experiments. He followed Morgan to the California Institute of Technology from 1930 to 1940. On the basis of his experiments, he articulated the idea that reproductive isolation can be caused by differences in presence of microbial symbionts between populations. In 1937, he published one of the major works of the modern evolutionary synthesis, The Synthesis of Evolutionary Biology with Genetics, entitled Genetics and the Origin of Species, which amongst other things, defined evolution as a change in the frequency of an allele within a gene pool. Dobbs Hansky's work was instrumental in spreading the idea that it is through mutations in genes that natural selection takes place. Also in 1937, he became a naturalized citizen of the United States. During this time, he had a very public falling out with one of his Drosophila collaborators, Alfred Sturtevant, based primarily in professional competition. In 1941, Dobbs Hansky was awarded the Daniel Giroux Elliott Medal from the National Academy of Sciences. He returned to Columbia University from 1940 to 1962. He was one of the signatories of the 1950 UNESCO statement The Race Question. He then moved to the Rockefeller Institute, shortly to become Rockefeller University, until his retirement in 1971. In 1972 he was elected the first president of the BGA. Behavior Genetics Association, and was recognized by the Society for his role in behavior genetics, and the founding of the Society by the creation of the Dobbs Hansky Award, for a lifetime of outstanding scholarship in behavior genetics. Dobbs Hansky was elected a foreign member of the Royal Society, for members, in 1965. In 1970, he published Genetics of the Evolutionary Process. Debate on Race Theodosius Dobbs Hansky and Ashley Montague debated the use and validity of the term race over a period of many years without reaching an agreement, and the debate has continued to the present day. Montague argued that race was so laden with toxic associations that it was a word best eliminated from science completely, whereas Dobbs Hansky strongly disagreed. He argued that science should not give in to the misuses to which it had been subjected. The two men never reached an agreement, 
which led Dobbs Hansky to say in 1961, while commenting on Montague's autobiography, the chapter on ethnic group and race is, of course, deplorable, but let us say that it is good that in a democratic country any opinion, no matter how deplorable, can be published, Farber 2015 p3. The concept of race has been important in many life science disciplines, the modern evolutionary synthesis revolutionized the concept of race, moving it from a strictly morphological definition based on racial types in humans, to a definition focused on populations differing in gene frequencies. This was done in hopes that its foundation in population genetics would undermine the deeply ingrained social prejudices associated with race. Dobbs Hansky had serious confidence that mixing races created no serious medical issues. Dobbs Hansky's experience with breeding fruit flies came into play when he made this conclusion. The only medical issue Dobbs Hansky found in this breeding was when certain crosses could lead to having infertile offspring. However, Dobbs Hansky noticed no such problems when humans from different populations reproduced. When anthropologists at the time were trying to compare the means of physical measurements of people from different races Dobbs Hansky argued that these means had no value because there was more variation between the individuals of each population than there was among the groups, Farber 2011 p 63. However, Dobbs Hansky's work and beliefs on genetics and evolution created opposition with his views on race mixing. First, that race has to do with groups and not individuals and so in this instance it is not races that mix, it is individuals. Second, if races do not mix then they will become different species, so therefore they have to mix. All of the races that currently exist are products of past mixed races, so according to Dobbs Hansky there is no pure race. Third, when race had been discussed in the past it was all about comparing means of trait to which this made no sense to Dobbs Hansky. Farber 2011 p 65-67 His concern with the interface between humans and biology may have come from different factors. The main factor would be the race prejudice that contributed in Europe that triggered World War II. His concern also dealt with religion and human life which he speaks about in his book The Biology of Ultimate Concern in 1967. The pervasiveness of genetic variation provides the biological foundation of human individuality, Ayala. Dobbs Hansky talks about in great detail that human nature has two dimensions, the biological, which mankind shares with the rest of life, and the cultural, which is exclusive to humans. Ayala. Both of these are believed to have come from biological evolution and cultural evolution, Ayala. Dobbs Hansky sought to put an end to the so-called science that purports one's genetic makeup determines their race and furthermore, their rank in society. Harrison E. Salisbury wrote in a New York Times article regarding his book Heredity and the Future of Man that Dobbs Hansky could not, alongside other scientists, agree upon what defines a race. Dobbs Hansky stated that a true bloodline for man could not be identified. He did not believe that a man's genetic makeup did not decide whether or not he would be a great man but rather that man has the rare opportunity to direct his evolution. Final Illness in the Light of Evolution Dobbs Hansky's wife Natasha died of coronary thrombosis on February 22, 1969. Earlier, on June 1, 1968, Theodosius had been diagnosed with lymphocytic leukemia, a chronic form of leukemia, and had been given a few months to a few years to live. He retired in 1971, moving to the University of California. Davis where his student Francisco Jose Ayala had been made assistant professor, and where he continued working as an emeritus professor. He published one of his most famous essays Nothing in Biology Makes Sense Except in the Light of Evolution at this time, influenced by the paleontologist priest Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. By 1975, his leukemia had become more severe, and on November 11 he traveled to San Jacinto, California for treatment and care. He died, of heart failure, on December 18. He was cremated, and his ashes were scattered in the Californian wilderness. Religious Beliefs Ernst Mayer stated, on the other hand, famous evolutionists such as Dobbs Hansky were firm believers in a personal God. Dobbs Hansky himself spoke of God as creating through evolution, 
and considered himself a communicant of the Eastern Orthodox Church.